This is Eklon Wastes spawning in the bottom right hand position. The blue Terran from STX Soul. His name is Last. His opponent spawning in the top left position. The red Protoss from SK Telecom T1. His name is Rain. So of course, uh, these guys have faced off in the past. Uh, Rain able to uh, get the upper hand overall in the score against Last. So uh, Last, we'll have to see how his condition is because he has been plagued by uh, a, a bit of uh, wrist injuries in the past. So hopefully that isn't affecting him a little bit, uh, isn't affecting him too much uh, in today's game here. Well, if he's sent, being sent out a lot more these days, that means he's completely healed, or at least he's at a point where he could play the Pro League matches. Exactly. Not in the, the position like Tasia where basically his, his wrists are at exploding status. Now, if you guys remember, Last and Rain were placed into the round of 32 for WCS, and that's because Rain took the first place in Auctional Kill OSL, and Last was fourth place in Auctional Kill OSL. They didn't um, see the second and the third qualifiers because their names were Dongrei Gu and MC. Yep, indeed. So... Right now, it looks like we may be seeing a CC first from our Terran player. And uh, standard gateway opening for Rain here. Uh, there's so many different potential openings now in this matchup. Even though the unit compositions are pretty similar, uh, just the, the different types uh, or the different ways you get to those unit compositions have completely changed. Yeah, uh, Protoss players have to play much safer than their opponent. That's the reason why Protoss players always get the gateway up and, you know, possibly get the one gas, but sometimes the double gas, and that's the reason why Terran players abuse it and go for the 15cc first. Now, this is a map where Argo stated that busting with the Immortals is a pretty good. Uh, pretty good strategy on this map. Even Flash lost against to that uh, yesterday with the early pressure with the Immortals and the second push. Flash couldn't defend against this. So let's see what Rain decides to do today. Uh, Rain is certainly a player that has the uh, ability to pull that off. No problem here. Being really annoying with this probe, actually forcing uh, another SCV down there to defend, and even a third one coming off the mineral line. Uh, at this point in the game, that's a lot of SCVs that aren't mining. Now, Rain, he isn't getting any gas yet, but he has gotten the guy swipes to death. That does mean he is going to go for that extremely fast Nexus to try to counter his opponent going for the command center first opening. I want to say counter is more about response to what the what Last is doing. He even checks the double barracks, so he knows even if he didn't scout inside the main base of Last, he knows that there's no geysers for Last. Exactly. So not having to worry about that, it'll it'll really just uh, narrow down the possible openings and follow-ups. Uh, to this build here, so Rain's going to be feel feeling pretty comfortable <laughs> in this situation. Come on, you have sunglasses. Why do you hide your face again with the sunglasses? Inside no with sunglasses and you still hide your face. That's a... Uh, I don't understand that. That's like a new level of meta right there, I'd have to say. And, uh, Someone's going to have to break that. <laughs> Someone's going to have to top it in the future. Uh, we have a double refinery going down for our, our Terran player and a Mothership Core on the way for Rain. Um, as well as the Cybernetic score completing gateway or warp gate research on the way. Um, last time, or one of the last times we saw Rain play against Terran, he went for the Stargate opener. So I am curious to see if he will go for something like that once again against a Terran opponent. Yeah, well, let's see what he does once he gets to 100 gas because he might, well, he could still go for the Robo. He wants to get the Observers out just in time against the Wooden Mines, but he could go for the Stargate. Like you said, he has a fantastic micro in that PBT against Flash, so he might do it again on this map. And since there's so much airspace near the third base and the main base, uh, you know, you could abuse the Oracles really well if you know how to micro it and make sure the Oracle doesn't get sniped. But no, he's going to go for the Robo. As, and interestingly enough, Ooh, we have two drop. Reapers on the way mm. from uh, last year. Seems like he really wants to snipe some probes earlier in the game. Well, I guess at, at least he's he's pretty much guaranteed okay. the scout his opponent yeah. out, too. Yeah, that's the second thing. It's like if you have the double Reaper, then there's no way that Protoss can actually deny it unless he has Stalkers and the Mother Support in the most perfect position to deny the scouting. Yeah, generally Protoss are as skimpy on units as possible in the early game against Terran simply mm -hmm. because... You know, why waste resources on those stalkers, the sentries and stuff when you can focus on your tech and your economy? So uh, oftentimes you won't see Protoss with too many units unless they're maybe going for some type of big bust attack. All right, so the, the plus one attack on the way for Terran. And uh, we aren't seeing any forges just yet from Rain, but I'm sure he'll eventually make them. Uh, Observer also on the way as well. Uh, another sentry being built. Warp gate just about complete. And both players are just kind of going in the macro mode. Uh, a little bit of scouting coming here from last, and he may be able to get uh, a few kills in on some probes here. The probes are forced off the mineral lines. He has one. Will he get two? 
He doesn't get the second one, but he does go inside the main base, and the Mother's Core is actually at the front, which means that the Reapers can go back. He even scouts a double forge, so these Reapers, even if they don't kill as many probes as they hope for, they did their job. Actually, killing up to four probes. Really nice job by Last. Yeah, so Last getting a few good snipes there. Double forge on the way for our Protoss player, and we do have the Factory Tech going down for Last as well. Uh, robotics going down for Protoss, so really everything just going towards a, a very standard mid-game at this point. Well, their Command Center at the location, this is a little surprising because most players, they'll try to build the Dark Command Center inside the main base to hide everything, but no, it seems like he wants to take an early expansion, you know. It's like the it's like the balance between, you know, getting the expansion after you get the Star Port out and getting a really fast third and then getting the gas. Exactly, and you know what, I think one of the reasons why Last decided to put that there is because he saw the Double Forge, he saw that there were no Immortals being made out of the Robo, so you know, he knows he's safe, why not go ahead and just be as greedy as possible with that fast third. Now let's see how Rain responds when... Ooh, uh, never, okay, there, there we, go. we go. He sees it, so this will prompt some type of response from Rain. He could go for maybe some type of bust, or he could go grab his third. I have a feeling though he's probably going to go for that faster third. Oh yeah, if he wants to just drag it into the mid-game and play as safe as possible, taking a fast third is pretty good against Terran players who takes a fast third. Now, uh, Protoss players don't try to take the fast third as much as possible nowadays because of the medevac drops. It's so effective with the booster, but once you check that your opponent went for the fast third, uh, fast third command center, you could take your Nexus and you're gonna be, you're gonna have to tech out in time, you're gonna have enough units out in time to defend against the medevacs. Uh, so, uh, we have Blink on the way as well for Rain. Uh, he's continuing to just uh, play very solid, getting the Colossus out, even getting a few cannons to defend against potential drops as well. Uh, those have been proven very useful here. And um, another Observer. So Rain really just going crazy on the Observers here. He wants to see everything. Yeah, you need to make sure that you have tons of observers on the map, such as Aquilon Waste, where there's so much airspace where the Protoss arm, uh, Terran army can, you know, try to drop inside your main base and drop at the natural at the same time, while also pushing up the, uh, at your natural ramp. Exactly on maps where there's lots of potential drops. Oh, hold on a second, we have Amazing extra force fields force here. Fields. Wow, killing off a lot of those units. Four of those units in the red. Uh, last barely escaping with some of those units here. They will get healed up, but that's a nice little mini victory for Rain here, and uh, we should see him take a, a third base very soon here, but still not opting to get that yet. He got 1-1. One, one. He's building four more pylons here, so it looks like he actually just got supply blocked. Yeah, it seems like he was focusing on some other things, such as Micro with the perfect force fields during the time, so, you know, sometimes the, even the top players, they, you know, they get supply blocked, so... You know, it happens here and there, and now he scouts the moving uh, units moving around Ooh. the map, but the Observer does scout it. Almost escaped, but almost. It still died. It did its job. Yeah. All right, we have 2-2 on the way for our Protoss player, getting the Thermal Lance upgrade for those Colossi mm. as well. So not moving into Templar tech just yet. Another nice Observer snipe for Lass. It's going to be very annoying for Rain to deal with. Yeah, but Lass is playing around with fire with the forces in the front because that's not a sizable army. He only has a few, uh, few clump of bio units in the front. And like, I s like we saw before, if uh, Rain puts down perfect force fields once again, then he could kill the army, go for the counterattack, and essentially win the game for free. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that last, he's not even attempting the drop at all on this map. Yeah, I'm quite surprised. I mean, he, he did get a fast, uh, relatively fast start. He has the economy kicking in right now. He's getting the medibacks, but it seems like he wants to go for the ghost tech first before doing anything else. You know, usually if players are this passive in PBT, they will try to, uh, TBP, they will try to get a fast fourth command center to counter the fast third. But it seems like none of that is happening, and now Last is slowly pushing out on the map, but he doesn't have any Vikings to actually face the main army of his opponent, so he's just trying to scare his opponent and trying to push, um, trying to get that out of position. All right, well, I think we may be finally seeing a drop from Last up in the top middle corner on the map. I'm eager to see, will that play a big effect? Actually, no, no it's Vikings. Vikings. They snipe the Observer. That's so smart by Last to do that, even... <laughs> S2 shaking his head. Yeah, that was actually a very good play <laughs> by him, even though my opponent is facing him. But that, I, that's like three observers sniped now. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, what the observer that was sniped on the 12 o'clock position is more crucial than the, any other observers around the map because not you can't put a pylon over there for the scout. And now Rain has to be careful. He doesn't know if the medivacs are going to come from the 12 o'clock position into the third, into the main. So he needs to position his units carefully and be ready to warp in extra units. That's the reason why he's putting the pylon in that position to make sure he can scout the medivac once it arrives inside his main base. Oh my, we have a lot more gateways being built right now from Rain. He's just putting a crap ton of them down. 3-3 mm. three, three on the way. Still building Colossi, though. Yeah. So well, really not committing the tempo attack at all. Reigns this one player who really loves to get massive number of Colossus out. So it doesn't matter how many Vikings his opponent has. He's going to snipe the Vikings with the Blink Stalkers and then try to power through with the leftover Colossus and the Charge Loss. That's what he loves to do. And then he transitions into Archons, into Templars, into Storms. Uh, we now see that we are having three Vikings at a time built from last. I think he realizes the, the Colossus threat uh, at this point. And Archon's also being added into the army composition as well. But we already have Ghosts on the way. Their uh, upgrade to give them more energy at the start when they're built has also completed and last taking a fourth base. But overall, this is one of the most passive Protoss vs. Terran games I've seen in a long time. Uh, the most passive one in Heart of a Swarm. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. That's actually probably uh, one of the most accurate statements about this um, game here. I guess Lance was thinking about how these players try to go for, you know, massive drops here and there. And once the drop gets deflected or, you know, medivac is sniped, the Pyronos player goes for the counterattack, and that's when Terran players cannot win the game. So he's just trying to get as many units as possible. Both players are maxed out, so now Lance wants to play more like Wings of Liberty and try to face the army 200. 200 200 army and put down the perfect EMPs to put the Vikings in perfect position and win the game. Yeah, the upgrades will favor Rain as soon as this 3-3 finishes here. We also have cloaking on the way for the ghosts. So they're gonna become they're gonna become very annoying for Rain to try to try to deal with here. Especially and after three observers were sniped on the map. Especially after those three observers. And um we have three command centers on the way as well. Looks like Last is going to slowly start throwing away his SCVs as the the game continues to progress. Three three just about completing for Rain now, and there it is. The three three army. Will we have good EMPs off? It looks like we have a potential battle that's going to happen here. Rain spreading out his forces. The Vikings are getting in position. The snipe does Colossus as well, but Rain he's going to move in now. A few EMPs go off, but they don't do too much damage. Mm -hmm. They actually hit the dead airspace, and here we go. All right, the Zealots moving in, charging, attacking these units here. There are so many Colossus here. The Vikings, they're getting completely focused down by these Stalkers, and there's going to be like two left here. The Zealots and the Archons are also completely annihilating this Terran army, and it looks like Rain, the engagement certainly went his way. Like I said, Rain really loves doing this, and he knows how to play perfectly. There is a reason why he was the first ever StarCraft to always sell a winner, because he knows how to play his style, and he knows how to play it perfectly. Not even trying to use Templar Storm in that battle. It doesn't matter. He has the Colossus count. I feel like the Vikings were a little bit undermade for last. And in addition to that, he just, he, you know, he didn't micro them back at all when the Colossus were attacking. And he just let the Stalkers snipe them down. Oh, yeah. And now with last not, that, not having that many Vikings, all Rain needs to do is make a forward pylon, reinforce once, and then go for attack and win the game. Yes, it's currently 146, the 174 supply. Rain very far ahead right now, and he's got some Archons, some more Archons added into his army composition, looking very deadly here. And last, forced to lift up a lot of these command centers here. The Medivacs actually lifting up a lot of those SCVs as well. And now Rain, he is maxed out, and he's going to go in for the attack. Here we go, Zealots charging in. The, Ar the Colossi are doing a great amount of damage here. Stalkers blinking. There's not any Vikings there. Amazing time warp going down. I think that's going to be it last. There is no way he can deal with this attack. GG. Rain making it look easy, showing it us how it's done in this matchup. And th this game also shows that Terran players, if they sit too passive, then Protoss Army is too powerful, and you cannot defeat it. Yeah, last is, is simply, he, he didn't drop once that game. He <laughs> sniped off observers, but he didn't do anything else. Yeah, he tried to scare the opponent at the 12 o'clock, and if he actually dropped, like, you know, three minutes later, when Rain wasn't expecting the drop, that would have been really hurtful for Rain, but he didn't go for that. Instead, he tried to play as passive as possible. He, it feels more like, uh, it feels more like um, his 